Welcome to Mastermath, you Einsteins. Today we're going to be talking about writing equations in one variable. Today we're going to talk about writing equations or writing equations in one variable. In one variable means that there's only one variable in the equation. And it doesn't take an Einstein to figure this thing out, especially if you use some good techniques to convert the word problem into an algebraic expression or equation. The first thing you need to think about and learn to do is to translate from English to algebra. Yeah, it, it's kind of like learning to speak French. It's a little bit like translating any language. We have to simplify the words that are written on the problem into algebra or into symbols to represent those words. And it's not that hard. Let's say we had a sentence. A number minus 23 is 13. Could you translate that into algebra? Well, you could. First of all, the word number is what we're trying to find out. That's the variable. That's what we don't know. We're going to solve for a number. This is a number which when you subtract 23 equals 13. So let's call a number n and we're going to translate number into n. The second thing we, we're going to translate is this minus sign. And you know how to translate minus from English to algebra it, or math. It just is a minus sign. The next thing to translate is 23. And that's easy. You just convert it from a word to a number, 23. The next one takes a little bit of experience. Is. When you see is in a, uh, in a word problem, you want to translate it to equals. And then 13 is easy to translate. That's just the number 13. So we could rewrite this n minus 23 equals 13. That wasn't hard, was it? Now you try this one. Hit your pause button. Write down the translation and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. Well, let's translate this sentence. Six cups is how many ounces? Six cups. Well, we're going to translate the six in from a word to a number, so we'll make that six. We're not going to really translate cups because it's going to stay the same, although we may use an abbreviation for it down in the equation. Is. You remember that means equals. So we're going to translate is into equals. How many? That's the question. That's what we're trying to answer. So we're going to translate that into x, the variable, what we're going to solve for. And then we're not going to translate ounces. We're just going to make an abbreviation, OZ. So we could tr translate six cups is how many ounces into six cups equals x ounces. Well, now let's take the translation of English into algebra one step further. We're going to use a strategy called CUCC or CUCCV to help us translate a word problem into algebra. Now a lot of word problems have a whole bunch of words in it that aren't really relevant to the solution. They're just there to confuse you. And then with all the words it's hard to focus in on what's really important. So we're going to use a strategy called CUCCV to help us focus in on what's really important and focus in on what the question's really asking us. What does CUCCV stand for? Well, the C stands for circle the numbers. This is math, people. The numbers are going to be needed to come up with the solution. So let's circle the numbers so we can focus in on the numbers in the word problem. Secondly, underline the question. Lots of times students answer questions that weren't really asked 
or they misunderstand the question that was asked and get the problem wrong. You need to underline the question and read it twice or three times to make sure you understand what the question's really asking you. Count. We don't use count too much in an algebra problem, so we'll just move past that to check your answer. When you get done and you've got a solution to the problem, plug it back in and see if it works. Well, that's CUCC, which you may be using in other classes and you may have seen in other subject areas, but I've modified it for math and for algebra by adding V, variable. If it's an algebra problem, you've got to create a symbol that represents what you're trying to solve for. That symbol may be X, it could be B, it could be A, but you're going to need a variable, and sometimes you need more than one variable. So, CUCCV stands for circle the numbers, underline the question, count, check your answer, and insert a variable or variables. Well, let's try one. Let's see if CUCCV makes this problem easier for you to understand. Fanny and Freddie sold lemonade at a stand in front of their house. Freddie was in charge of making the lemonade, and Fanny was in charge of counting the money. On Saturday, they sold $27 worth of lemonade, some to family and some to neighbors. Each cup of lemonade cost 75 cents. Most people thought the lemonade was very good and promised they would buy some more the next weekend. How many cups of lemonade did Fanny and Freddie sell? Boy, there's a lot of words in there, and they're telling you all kinds of stuff that may be interesting, but it's not really relevant to what we're trying to do, figure out how many cups of lemonade did Fanny and Freddie sell. I mean, do you need to know that Fanny was in charge of counting money in order to figure out how many cups of lemonade were in there? And do you need to know that the neighbors and the people who bought it thought it was very good? Now, that's irrelevant to solving the problem. But if we see UCCV, we'll be able to focus in on what's really important. So let's do that. As we read through this, we come to a number, $27. That's a number, so let's circle it. We go a little bit further, and it says each cup of lemonade costs 75 cents. Another number, let's circle it. And then let's go down to the end, and it says... The question, how many cups of lemonade did Fanny and Freddie sell? And we're going to give that a name, a variable name. We'll call that X. Well, now we've simplified all these words, and we can only have to look at a few things. We look at $27, $0.75, and X. That's a lot simpler than all the words in this equation, and we can hopefully figure out that $27 equals... 75 cents per glass times the number of glasses of lemonade that we sold. So the equation would be 27 equals 0.75x. Oop, oop, that's the recess bell. Einstein says it's time to take a break. You can either get up and get a glass of water, or if you want to stay here, I've got some silly physics jokes to keep you entertained for a minute. See you back here in a moment. Ooh, that's the end of recess bell. It's time to get back to work. 
go on to the next slide and hit the pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Well, there's sure a lot of words in there, and I, I get confused when I see that many words. So let's C-U-C-C-V it. Let's kind of cut it down in size so we've got less things to think about. Let's circle 13. Even though it's a word, it represents a number, so we're going to circle 13. I next circled 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. because they're numbers. But when I think about the problem, I think I, I'm pretty sure that 8 a.m. and 4 p.m., the hours that the stand stays open is not really relevant to my question. So I've circled them, but I don't think it'll be part of the answer. I circled $900, and I'm, I'm positive that's going to be part of the answer. And then there's no more numbers until we get all the way to the end of the question or the end of the paragraph, and it asks, how much money did each farmer make from the produce stand? Well, that's the question. That's what we're trying to solve for. And we better give it a variable name. So let's call that X. Now the question is to figure out how those three elements that we've got left, 13 farmers, $900, and X, how they tie together. Well, hopefully you can see that X is going to equal 13 farmers and $900 and some combination of those. And hopefully you'll see it, it's simple as this. It's just X equals the $900 divided by the 13 farmers, or 69.23 per farmer. Now we can go back and check this. Remember C-U-C-C-V, there's a check in there. And you just check it by plugging that the answer you got, 69.23, back into the question. And the question was, there were 13 farmers and if we multiply those 13 farmers times 69.23, we get the $900 that they typically would make on a Saturday. Give this one a try. See if you can convert this into an algebraic expression and then solve it. Hit your, hit your pause key, try your luck, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. Boy, there's a lot of words there. I, I'm, I'm confused. I, I think it'll be a lot easier if I go through this and circle the numbers, and then I'll underline the question to make sure I understand what the correct, correct question is. And then I'll give the question a variable name, so I'll be able to put the pieces together into an algebraic expression. All right, let's start reading. Stephanie was very good run at running long distances, and she practiced every day running home from school, running to the playground and back, and running with her dog. That's all very interesting information, but it probably has nothing to do with solving this problem. Let's keep reading. This spring, she plans to try out for the track team, hoping to be able to run the 1,500-meter race. 1,500 meters. Well, that's a number, but I happen to know, and I think you can see, that that's really the, the title of the race, and the 1,500 meters is not, that number is not part of the solution. So we'll keep going. The track coach told her that she needs to be able to run the event in under 5 minutes and 40 seconds. There, there's a number, and I bet that's important. I'm going to circle it. All right. In order to make the team, Stephanie's father has been timing her, and the best time Stephanie has run is 6 minutes and 5 seconds. Oh, there's another number. I better, I better circle it. I'll keep reading now. How many seconds improvement does Stephanie need to make in order to make the track team? Oh, I, I think there's a questioning in there. Let's underline the question. And then we better give it a, a variable name so we know what we're solving for and we can put the pieces together. Let's see. This, this is a, an improvement, so why don't we call it I? Okay, well now we only have three things to look at. We don't have all that mass of words to confuse us. We've got three things. We're solving for I, so we're going to write I equals. And then we've only got two other things. And the question is, how much does she need to improve? Or what difference does she need to make in her time? Well, let's take her current time, 6 minutes and 5 seconds, 
and subtract the time that she needs to run, 5 minutes and 40 seconds. And then we can say that I equals 6 minutes and 5 seconds minus 5 minutes and 40 seconds. Now, I better probably convert the, both of these times into just seconds, which I've done below. I equals 365 seconds minus 340 seconds. So, I can make that subtraction and conclude that the improvement that Stephanie needs in her time in the 1500 is 25 seconds. Well, that's our lesson on writing equations. It's not that hard if you remember CUCCV. Circle the numbers, underline the question, and put a variable in there. Now let's test your skill. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on writing equations and see how you do. Then go back to MasterMath and try the quiz on writing equations. Well, I hope you had a good time, and we look forward to seeing you again real soon.